here's a video about this uh, Zatagi ATU. It's a TM535 and I bought this quite a few years ago on eBay for 30 quid and uh, I've used it a fair bit uh, during that time but unfortunately uh, one of the switches has started to play up a bit so I've opened it up and I thought people might like to see what is inside this. Um, these are actually quite expensive to buy new and I don't think anybody really buys them. <laughs> uh, but um, I have one so I'll let you see what's inside it. First of all, I'll show you what's on the outside. It's got a switch that allows you to go between uh, two different coax inputs. Balanced wire, which actually goes via a ballon. And uh, then you can switch it to external dummy load, which I find very useful. And it's the usual uh, transmatch arrangement, the two capacitors and the variable inductor. So here's what's inside. And I will show you what the fault was. Uh, I've got the two capacitors. I thought I was going to have to hoover this out, but there's not really much dust on it. Um, it's actually quite well put together. I mean, that's pretty sturdily put together. This is the inductor switch, which I've cleaned, but in fact was working perfectly well. And that's what I would have expected to see. But what I didn't expect was this very flimsy switch here for the antenna uh, switch over contacts. Um, it's actually quite loose. It's on a flexible coupler. And this actually is where the problem is. It's, it's not quite making contact in the right places. So I've cleaned it, but it really is just a play problem. So I might have to replace this switch at some point. That's the ball in there. That's, I think it's a four to one. And that's used for connecting to, if you were using an open wire feeder with it. Uh, possibly quite lossy. One of the good things about this is it has peak reading uh, SWR meter and power meter switched all between 50 and 500 watts. So uh, it's actually quite an accurate meter uh, compared to other ones that I've used. So that is a good point there as well. I suppose the downside really is the former for that coil, which is going to be lossy. It's made from some sort of softish plastic. And although I can't test it, I'm pretty certain that that is going to be lossy. Uh, it would be better if that was an air-spaced coil, but I guess that's too expensive for them to make. I'll show you the back. And you can see from this that there are two coax inputs. That's the output to the radio. That's the socket that goes to dummy load if you put the switch in the dummy load position. Um, that's just for a long wire antenna. And if you were connecting to balanced line, that's the ballon. But the ballon is completely separate, so you would have to put a jumper between there and there in order to use it. And that's the back of the switch PCB. Um, I thought there was some signs of burning actually on this uh, board, but there isn't. It's just a slight discoloration in the manufacturing process. I think there's a bit of flux uh, got on that board. Uh, and that's the back of the meter, which is obviously all glued in. Um, I was quite impressed actually with some of the soldering on this, which is pretty good for something that's uh, not, well, it's an expensive thing to buy, I think, but it's not an expensively made thing, you know? So that is the inside of the Zetagi ATU. And I should say this is a full amateur band uh, tuner. It's, uh, it covers uh, top band 10 meters. Uh, as you see on the front there, it's not a CB one as such. So hope someone has found that interesting.